well, you taught me everything I know. I always am like, dude, congratulations. Like, you did the work. Like, I don't take credit for that. But I'm so glad that it was, you were picking my content. People tell me now, Marty, you put out a video every day. Like, yeah. you work so hard. I'm like, you should have seen me before. Man. Right. Like, this is nothing. Yeah. Something, something that, uh, that uh, might, might mm -hmm. definitely be mm -hmm. coming out very soon. So I'm just uh, thrilled and feels fortunate and lucky. You could, I couldn't have wished a more perfect life for myself. my friend very nice hey everyone Dinesh here from Gibson Brands and we are sitting with the one the only Mr. Marty Schwartz hey what's up you guys holy smokes we're <laughs> so here again, we're man. here man it's so great to see you you too Dinesh uh, thanks for having me and and obviously I, I have loved working with Gibson and Epiphone these past few years it's, yeah. it's been a dream come true and an honor so and here we are. Man, loving the stuff that, that's been collaborated on, you know. Some of the things that I want to talk to you that we were talking about earlier was just, um, you know, some of the things that maybe just got you started playing the instrument. Sure. I know there's a long journey from the inception of it, the <laughs> right. learning, the, the lessons and all that. But man, like what was like some of the just key moments or like the beginnings that yeah. got you into guitar? Cla classic rock playing in the house. Perfect. As a child. Yes. For sure. My dad played... Uh, you know, lots of the kind of 60s and 70s stuff. Classic. Hendrix, Beatles, a lot of Cat Stevens. Cool. Um, was playing growing up. So I always was around, you know, music as a soundtrack. And then my dad, he's not a musician, but you know, he had a acoustic line around, you know, that, that every once in a while he'd strum a few chords on. Right. So there was a guitar. Like I was, okay. I, I visually remember not playing guitar, but like playing with the tuner, strumming it, and just being interested in it. Yes. Um, and then having that kind of classic rock upbringing. And then you and I both grew up in Southern California. Cali kids, And yes. I have an older sibling who, my older sister, like I used to like kind of latch onto her and her boyfriends and they'd drive up to LA and listen to all the, you know, Red Hot Chili Peppers they turned me on to and like the whole LA scene back in the late 80s, early 90s. So I kind of had like, the older siblings that I was like looking up to as ah. well, but it didn't. It didn't. Uh, that didn't lend itself to playing an instrument quite yet. But I definitely was always like a pop culture junkie. Mm. So like movies and music, MTV. You and I are the MTV generation. Yes. I remember every day coming home from middle school and putting on the the video countdown, and like Guns and Roses were on it, and then of course the switch over to the grunge thing. So like I was just kind of living and breathing the pop culture, but didn't know I had any musical ability inside of me. Gotcha. So I was just really into all the music, but didn't know oh, I could I play. See. Yeah. Well, so what age did you think, like what age did you start playing? Yeah, so I, I got a guitar, I got my own guitar when I was 13, took a few lessons and it just didn't, didn't stick. It was like Mary had a little lamb, you know? Okay, so yeah, when we talk about lessons didn't stick, yeah. that, that's a good point. It's good for me because- Magnify that for a second. Well, here I am, teaching guitar, you know, for the last 15 years sure. full time. But when I was 13, I went into this guitar store and he had the the Mel Bay book, I think uh, it was. Ah, yes. And so I was like, nah, it's not for me. I don't play guitar. I'm not good at guitar in my in my mind. You know, I'm only 13. So in my mind, it's like, oh, guitar is not for you. Sure. So that was it for me. I was mm -hmm. like, I'm not a musical person. And then uh, senior year of high school, you know, you start getting a little more freedom, you're getting a little older, hanging out. Um, and I had some friends that, that had started to get pretty good okay. at guitar. And just by being in a more casual setting, 
I'd be like, Dinesh, I'm never going to be a guitar player, Dinesh, but can you just show me one chord so when I go to someone's house, Dude, I can strum it. Totally. And that's how it started. With I yeah. knew a D chord yeah. for uh, you know for about a year. And so when I'd go to someone else's house, you're like, oh, you have a guitar. Ring. And that, yeah. that was it. But once I got the like foundation, which is just the open cowboy chords and like I had one, you know, position of the, the scale, scale sure. the open scale and just the basic open chords. Bar chords were a little tricky, but I kind of understood like where they came from. And so that was just the basic uh, foundation that I thought I'd be happy with. Yeah. And I just kept adding one little thing, one little more thing, one little more thing. And then when I was like, well, geez, this is actually easier than I thought it would be. So then I started actually seeking out guitar teachers. And okay, I, so I you took revisit real lessons. this. It's yeah. funny though, before you get to that, where it was like more of the human interaction yep. was where it was kind of taking shape. Your first guitar teacher was kind of like, maybe not no the No interest in me. Right. No, like he was like, uh, when is this? He was more, when is this gonna be over than yes. I was, you know? Yes. And, and, and I was like that too, like, yeah, I don't like this. Right. But you know, you can tell when someone's just kind of burned out. Yeah. Or, yeah so so what, as a guitar teacher, even before YouTube and videos and all this, I knew right away if I ever taught guitar that I would do the opposite of what that guy did. Right. I would like, what's your name? Totally. What do you and like? And connect with that person. Do you have a favorite movie? Do you yes. have a favorite video game? Yes. Like, oh, what do you like? Do you do other things? You know, I mean, I'm, this is more like if it was like a little kid. Well, it's funny with the little kids, it's like if they're so heavily into video games where it would be like, okay, well, what's your favorite? Like, give me your favorite video game and then like, what's the theme song of the video game? Let's no. just learn that for a I second. I absolutely you know? did that or like, I mean, can we find like a theme show? Sure. That, like, yo, you like Star Wars? Because they're those only enough? susceptible to what the music their, their parents are listening to. So totally. some of them may not have had any music at that point. Well, guitar lessons are, it's all about the relationship. Right. The guitar totally and learning the instrument is secondary. It's, yes. it's trust, bond, friendship, making them feel comfortable with you so that right. they'll trust you because it's a little intimidating, like someone's staring at you and like saying that's wrong or that's right or you know, or you didn't practice that week. So you're and taking all of this from the lessons that you were taking yourself. Very much, yeah, because yeah. I ended up only, I mean, I ended up being in bands and becoming a professional musician. Meanwhile, the first lessons I took made me feel like I wasn't good at all. When in reality, it was just that it wasn't the right uh, initial experience. Right. So I really always, I mean, it's now, you know, close to 40 years now later, and I still reflect very much on that very first experience. So that's interesting because it really shows where you, that just gave me the background story that I needed to understand why it is you do what you do now. Yeah. Your lessons and your approach ever since, you know, the early days that I saw the first videos, uh, you're, you know, you, you come off in a way to where you connect, you seem like, you know, you're a man of the people. Yeah, you're not yeah. intimidate, you're not trying to be like, you know, I'm the wizard and... I'm not trying to intimidate you, I'm trying to do the opposite. Right. I'm trying to make you feel like, oh, this well, it's isn't inviting. so bad. It's yeah, a yeah, very yeah. inviting thing yeah. and, and it's like, I, it like comes back to like, especially with the start of, and we should get into that, like just the start of it all. Yeah. Because you're not there in front of them, you're not in their homes, you're right. not in their living rooms, as opposed to a, a, a guitar teacher that's like private teacher that's right. going from house to house. Well, I will say uh, I'm in my late 40s, and so I taught a, a, a good decade of one-on-one, -on -one, like thousands of guitar lessons. Before the YouTube. Before I thing. wasn't teaching yeah. people. Gotcha. Like all I did was teach people. Sure. And you learn, you just inherently learn little tricks that work with people. And it's like, oh, like, you know, when I said, take a D chord and I, I, I forgive the uh, sound effect, but I would say, oh, that it's like free spray. Yeah. So you like freeze your, and you know, they're little kids so sure. they're laughing, but you know, it's, and then it freezes your fingers into the shape and just pretend Something. that it does that. Yeah. And then when we put it back on, you just fix whatever you need to fix. But I mean, that was like a muscle memory thing, but I, I had to teach real lessons to learn that. I couldn't just come up with that in my mind as a video guy. Right. These were all things that I did for years yeah. with people. And then the other thing that I, I it's a it's humorous, but it's also true. I taught elementary school music for a few years before okay. YouTube. It wasn't something I was looking to do, but I ended up doing it. But I, I joke that nothing prepares you for keeping people's 
attention than trying to teach an entire kinder- kindergarten class music. Wow. Yeah, because that's now a wave of attention spans <laughs> yeah. that have to all be grabbed at the same time. Because yeah, much. private lessons before, it's like one, you could do one at yeah. a time, you're yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, more than yeah. two, more 30, than three. 35 year olds, like, you yeah. know, ants in their pants. And they're so excited that they just walked from their class somewhere else. And right. Like, ah. So how long <laughs> is that going on before the start of the channel, basically? Um, well, basically, they're they're separate because okay. I was teaching elementary school music and then full time tons of gigs, nighttime gigs, different bands, local gigs, band, all kinds of stuff. Okay. Um, non unlimited private students all day, um, all that stuff. So I was just like super busy. But then the economy crashed in two thousand eight, and like I lo- kind of lost it all at once mm. in one kind of fail swoop. I got laid off from the job, lost a bunch of gigs because they had cut off live entertainment. And then my private students, not all of them, but some of their parents were had financial stuff going on with it as well. And so they cut out guitar lessons and mm. dance lessons or whatever, the extracurricular stuff. So in this just like one week period, I kind of lost all my employment. Oh, wow. I was a self-employed oh. guy. Sure, and so sure. I kind of like lost all this work. And so I was like, I need to do something. I, I need to get yeah. more students. It wasn't, yeah. I need to, ooh, I'm going to invent a business and right. thing that doesn't exist. Yeah. No, it was like, I need students today sure. to pay for the bills. So I'm going to start making YouTube videos to just promote myself as a guitar teacher. So like there wasn't that many people doing it at that time. No. There was like a handful of of people out there that I remember. Yeah, um, and well cuz it wasn't like an obvious like uh career path or anything. Right. You were kind of like just doing it for free. Yeah. So you yes. would need the free time to to invest into making videos and stuff and I just happened to like lose all my work. So I got laid off from the elementary school teaching job and on the drive home I was my head was spinning about what I was going to do, and I pulled in to my house and immediately shot my first like official wow, video of like the future. So the channel, what year is this when this happens? Yeah, that was just like a Marty, like I think it was called. It's like like the email address I used back, you know, Marty FS seventy four or something like that. Um, so that I think that's archived somewhere, but but that was just like the the start of it and. There was no way to like do it as a living, but I I did start to get an audience. Yeah, and then it was like, well, what do you do with the audience? And back then, I didn't really quite know exactly what to do, um, but I've just continued to, you know, I've never taken a break. I've just continued to go down this one path. What were some of the like key moments that happened to where you were kind of seeing that the ramp up? Yeah, where yeah. It's like you know what. Well, this is actually a thing now. For sure. Well, yeah. it was. Uh, so I was still teaching guitar when I was making videos. Sure. And so I originally was shooting. I started shooting clips with my private students and making clips just for them, um, so you could practice later. Yeah. And I thought I was like really innovative. Yeah. At the time, and but I would title the video, you know, let uh, June twenty six lesson for Dinesh on Jimi Hendrix, whatever, right? Right, right. And so it was, and I did that specifically so I could say, Dinesh. In the video. I'm gonna see how many views the video got, because your name's in the title. All you have to do is type your name into YouTube, and the video will pop up, and I'm gonna check to see that you watched it to make sure you practiced. Oh, that's smart. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, And, but it would just be like, Dinesh lesson with the date, so you could find it real easily for, for an organization. But one day, and Guitar Hero was huge at this time, I taught this little kid, eight-year-old, Mississippi Queen. Okay. And he was eight years old. So one, I was like, why do you know that song? And he was like, Guitar Hero. And I was like, awesome. And so I taught it to him, but just by accident or just, I, you know, it was not planned, I typed how to play the intro to Mississippi Queen for Dinesh or for oh, the wow. kid's name. Oh, okay, okay. And f- because I titled it that way, it got a few hundred views that none of the other videos got. And so that's a term called search engine optimization that I didn't know existed. But I was like, okay, well, next time I do it, I'm clearly going to title it that way now because now other people are watching it, not just Dinesh. Sure. And so that was a huge light bulb moment and it was a total Ooh, accident. Interesting, yeah. And so from then I was like, you know, Metallica, nothing else matters, blah, blah, blah. Da, 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 you know, and, yeah. and I just kept, okay, there's something to that. And so that was, that was definitely one of the earliest, like, light bulb moments. And then I would say... Uh, 
like studying what other people were doing online with YouTube because there was no ad revenue. It was the Wild West. You yes. know, it was just kind of like you just put something up and see what happens. So uh, I'd say the next big step was like I started burning DVDs of like instruction okay. to sell to people. Oh, so okay. that's so like, more generalized content. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Not yeah. like famous songs. Like, okay. here's your very first chord you should learn. Right, you know, right. Beginner acoustic, beginner okay. blues, yeah. how to play lead guitar. And I still sell, 15 years later, I have all digital, a whole digital library of, okay. of courses. You Online can, courses. Yeah. Yeah, that you can yeah. buy that are not related. But so that was like another kind of step towards it being a career because, you know, I wasn't making a living at it. I was just building an audience. So how many years are going by during this time frame? I'd say frame? like a year and a half in, like somewhere near in the middle of 2009, I was actually making okay. a bit of a living and yeah. still teaching and gigging. Yeah. And, but, you know, I could cut off cut out the worst students, the ones that didn't practice or, you know. I mean, anyone that's taught knows there's like certain lessons you go to that you're looking forward to. Yeah. Certain lessons that are more like Where you've re babysitting. Like Groundhog's Day and it's the same lesson over and over again. Totally, totally. Uh, I do remember, I mean, you know, a lot of times too, like I know that parents would want to push their kids into a, a bunch of different things yep. um, to see where they would kind of take off. But, you know, especially back then, it wasn't as accessible to get gear at the prices that they are now. So like an electric guitar or an acoustic guitar was was quite a, was a few hundred dollars at least. Yep. And it was, may have not been as, as good as what you could get today. I mean, well, today you can get a, a decent, you know, you can get something for a hundred bucks. Yeah, I remember the starter packs when I worked in at a music store. Yeah. They had the little amp guitar combo thing. Sure. And those things would not stay in tune. Like, right. In a lot of ways is kind of, I think, dis could dis it's discourage It's super discouraging. Yeah. Nowadays with the uh, advanced in like automation yeah like you can get a cheaper guitar now that actually will be in tune will right. play and i'm so impressed with that I yeah mean, i'm glad what were some of the things that like mm, you know some of the things that you help with people to like retain staying on track with the lessons because of yeah. the discouragement because yeah like you said something earlier that we were talking about you're not going to be great your first week. Everyone sucks the first chord, yeah. you know? Uh, what I think, you know, this is one of the, the also the downsides of, of something like YouTube is that someone can look up one of their favorite songs and they're not very good at guitar, but they look up some song that's like just not ready for their ability of... There's of, no one there to guide them. There's no one there to say, well, actually, if you just learned like 20 songs that use G, C, D, E minor and all that and like got those down when you came back to the little bit harder stuff. Like, yeah. in other words, there's like a progression you need to take and everything's there all at once now on YouTube. That's a good point. So that's one of the downsides. But so to answer your question, it, it's all about like finding that right level of challenge. Yeah. Because if it's too challenging, you're actually not even going to improve. It's right. just too far above your level. And the other thing about guitar is that e and the very first chord I ever learned, D, I mean, just the little shape is there, you know. I mean, every, in you know, the most basic chord still evolves into the most advanced music. Correct. It all starts with yeah. this simple stuff. So, you know, obviously people are just searching out songs and searching things everywhere, but, but you know, the best thing they could do is to have you know a, a roadmap where yeah. it's like here you got to get the foundation. You have to once get the you get the foundation, everything's fun. Yeah, and you can just add little challenges. And and the fun thing, and, and, uh, the thing that you said too, there's no one to govern what they go after. Right. And you're right. Like yeah, it's like you could go immediately to this song, but like was that really the right moment for you? And then that could cause discouragement for someone. Totally. And which it, the value is in when they when they sign up with people like you to go through courses where they can take them step by step. Because, yeah, not everyone's going to have someone coming to their house anymore to do guitar lessons the way they used to. Almost no one, yeah. Yeah. I mean, dude, I remember that grinder. It was tough. It was tough trying to figure out how many to put in one day and how many <laughs> you needed for the week to, like, break even. Oh, my Saturdays. Oh, my Saturdays were just... I mean, people go... People tell me now, Marty, you put out a video every day. Like, yeah. you work so hard. I'm like... You should have seen me before. Man. Right, like, this is nothing. Yeah, I would wake up, you know, on a Saturday, and I lived in in North San Diego. I'd wake up on Saturday, drive down to the South San Diego. Right, I had it all mapped out in the morning, and I literally taught my way up 
all the way up to Orange County, yeah. where I played a, a Saturday. I had a regular Saturday gig that would go from like nine to one in the morning. Sure. So I would wake up early Saturday oh, morning, go all the way down yeah. south, and drive up the coast lessons. Oh yeah. And then te- do the gig, and then one of my still one of my best friends that I still play music with when I play a bit, my keyboard player in that band was always kind enough to stay on the phone with me on the drive home because it was like a lot it was like an hour and a half yeah. drive so I'd get home at like four in the morning sure. and he would sit there and he was already home and he would uh, keep me awake and talk yeah. to me and I st- and we laugh about those conversations because all I would talk about is how much I was struggling and these are one of those like four hour gig kind of things yeah where you're like playing like a hundred yeah. tunes or whatnot and it's everything yeah and I would life. like those drives, I would like pour my heart out to my friend Brent and uh, just be like, yeah, man, why am I doing music Which anymore? Which is also a good way to shed through that stuff. Yeah. I mean, it definitely builds. But I was the... like very much like right leading up to this amazing opportunity that happened to me. Right leading up to it, I was like wanting to quit doing music yeah. for a living because uh, it was so draining and like I was just working so hard that I didn't come home and enjoy a guitar anymore. Right. Now, oh, right, do right. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're teaching all yeah. day and you're playing and and there a little bit of the enjoyment was taken out. Mm. Um, and so now, I mean, that was fif- over 15 years ago. I mean, now I wake up every day and play guitar first. Sure. For no one, no cameras, you no, know, not what am I going to teach? Just like, I wake up and play for an hour because I enjoy it. I was just going to ask why. Yeah, yeah, that's it. No, I just enjoy it. So... Um, are you a gear? Are you a gearhead? Not really. Okay. But I mean, I, I'll, I'll, I will, I'll go there with you. Okay. I'll go there I've with gotta you. Ask because you know, in giving the lessons, I'm sure that people are, you know, the students are asking you uh, probably opinions on gear and like what for they sure. should buy and all that. I for mean, sure. For sure. Where do you? Where do you? I mean, what is? Do you keep it pretty simple, or are you, like you got the whole big pedal board layout, or is it? Uh, well. No, I like pedals. Yeah. No, I mean, I like gear. I guess when I say I'm not a gearhead, it's like I can't get into the uh, weeds with all the tech What specs. kind of diodes are the, in there? Yeah, the diodes, pedal. none sure, of that. Sure. None more of, that. It's more like, of the purpose driven. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, I really like this one. Yeah, yeah I like the way that this sounds. Sure. Or, I'm not like, oh, what's the technical? Or that's cool if I had to play harder rock or more. Totally. Uh, I, I'm very much like, uh, you know, like a, like a listener. Like a, a, an enjoyer of music, so when I yeah. hear gear, it's the same thing. It's like, ooh, I like that, or I don't like it, um, or I like the way this feels, but I can't necessarily go, oh, like, what are the fret lengths or, or, sure. or the, yeah, specs? No, like that. I totally respect that. I mean, it sounds like, and it for for you know what it's worth, it's like you know, it's like if there's a purpose for it, you're you're gonna dive into yeah. it, or if there's like a particular sound that you're looking sure, for. Sure. Well, I definitely, you, I definitely remember like guys like Santana. Allman Brothers, and then later like Trey from Fish, sure. having like semi hollow bodies or like F hole yeah. guitars, and like it was the 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 sustain of like you know those like almost feeding back like right. hollow Which body these sounds. type of guitars right. lend to that naturally. So that was like I definitely grabbed onto like gotcha. what I didn't understand necessarily the science. So you've been of into it. hollow bodies for a while, yeah. semi hollow bodies. Yeah, for before okay. I ever had one, that was like yeah. my goal, and. Leading up to it, I mean, I'm so bummed because I don't have like my first three or four guitars that I owned in my mm. life because I was trading them in. Yeah, I, I mean, had to rare if someone actually kept one of those. I yeah. mean, so now I'm just like, oh man, just just to like for the nostalgia and sure. like the like, oh, I remember like being so sucky on that guitar, you know, like I remember not. And the know, action but, was like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I remember I only knew like, you know, I could only right. do that one thing, and and uh, yeah, I mean, my first electric. Was a you know, candy apple Mexican strat, you know, because it was. Cheap. I have one of those yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the the uh, ES three thirty five was the goal, right? And I would say it took three or four years of trading in, selling, gigging, saving, you know, which is so not what was okay because you look at the nineties. Yeah, I mean there were some people playing yeah. back, but you know it was mostly like more odd shaped guitars, totally. or like strats, and then you know of course you had Les Pauls and SGs always in the forefront. Um, but like you always think of like it's funny man because you always think of like the semi hollow body stuff is like well you know it's more like just classic blues or like right. jazz, and it's like a lot of people have rocked out with that style guitar you, you that can, we don't you, you know. can get a Les Paul sound pretty easily in the bridge pickup. Yeah, like, it's. And, but with a little extra of that feedback. Right. You know, I feel like it's a little brighter than a Les Paul. But um, but that was always the, the goal. And I, but I was, you know, I loved uh, Back to the Future. 
Sure, great movie. So that one of my like favorites. connected yeah. even. I didn't play guitar yet when that movie was out, but like you knew that was that the final. I, that iconography of the guitar from that movie yeah. and the impact. Like there was always something there. And yes. then when I saw Back to the Future, I think I was in like fifth grade. I'm dating myself, but you know. You see the ads for the movie, and they don't say like the character's name or anything. Right. So you're just like, oh, this is, like great new exciting movie, and you go in, and they everyone's saying Marty all the time, and like it wasn't. I don't think I've ever been had another Marty like in my life. Sure. I've like met, oh, you're Marty too, like, but I've never like had someone in my life with the name Marty, and so like watching that movie and the main character is named Marty. And I'm a little kid. It was just exciting. I don't know. Right. And I didn't play guitar, and that scene was like the best scene in the movie. And he literally played very similar guitar to this. So. Yeah. Well, like even in the intro band, uh, in the intro jam that we were doing, I kind of wanted to go over just like the philosophy of like playing with another guitar player. Sure, sure. Like immediately, you know, I'd listen and be like, okay, you start with the progression. Right. That's somewhat, you know, easy to grasp. Sure. So that way the other person can play it. A, sure, sure. Within a quick amount of time. Sure. And it was like, okay, you're on the neck pickup, so then I'll go to the bridge pickup. Right, like Just right. these little like things where it's like, Totally. I don't know if that's like, you know, it's not something that you think about when you don't have to play with someone else. Sure. Well, and we're in a different time, you know, like yeah. you can actually have, as weird as it is, you can have a music career in your bedroom now. Right. I mean, it's just I nice. wouldn't want to. Yeah. But I mean, I kind of do as well. But I mean, but I spent so many years only playing with people and right. not doing anything like it's nice to have that that interaction and then um, i played lots of gigs before my youtube career mm -hmm. so i don't have this like thing that i need to get out of my system like it was pretty much out of my system like before but and, you're still playing and i still am yeah, yeah, yeah and i enjoy it right but with the luxury of just whenever i want and so like all the bands i played in and you know cut my teeth writing songs with and all this stuff it was never like my name it was always a band and i never ever was trying to be the front man i never imagined uh my name on a guitar or my name on a marquee even right. you know and so uh but because i have this relationship with the, the my audience it 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 fits so well now but it wasn't my goal like so now i'm literally playing shows where it's like my name and it was not i was that's like beyond my wildest fantasies wow, yeah. of what i was trying to do so it's pretty it's pretty fun that's that's awesome man yeah. i mean and it's you know you've built this thing which is fantastic it's great and it's it's iconic i mean yeah. it's just one of those things where you know uh uh it's just as being famous as like you know a slash or any one of the big guitar players it's like the same type of level and it's enjoyment at, and excitement. i mean it, you say that and i've other people have said that to me and it's just like it's almost too much for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, like, well, the, the work was put in. The, no, know, totally. The no, was believe, in. believe me. Like, I know. Like, when you look at the screen and those numbers are on there, right? Those are real people that watched yeah. and learned from me. Yeah. And now that I've been doing it 15 years, I get to meet uh, people like Greta Van Fleet, sure, uh, or the uh, the Struts. Great band. Uh, the Struts guitar player Adam was a 15 year old watching YouTube lessons. That's how he learned. Nice. Yeah, and the first, you know, I mean, but there's so many others like that. And I'm not saying I'm the only one. And also, I never take credit for anyone's guitar playing because, as you know, it was you that did it. Someone was there to maybe provide information, but you had to like put the work in to learn it. You know, right. I know like people have showed me stuff. But if I didn't actually put the time in, then that's for nothing, right? Yes. So, so all I'm saying is like when people are like, oh, you taught me everything I know, I always am like, dude, congratulations. Like you did the work. Like I don't take credit for that. But I'm so glad that it was you were picking my content. What's the like, what's your like absolute first beginner's guitar lesson definition? What is the like first There's thing two. that you go There's to? There's two because it depends on like, this is a newer generation thing too. Yeah. Do you imagine, like, what do you imagine yourself playing? Uh, and I don't just mean you, Dinesh. I yeah. mean, anyone that wants to learn, I'm like, do you, like, when you close your eyes and see yourself playing guitar, are you playing in a coffee house on an acoustic guitar and singing songs? Or are you, like, playing a blues solo on an electric guitar? Because whatever you, like, envision yourself doing, start that now. So I'm saying, what do, you, what do you want to do? Because yeah. the more excited you are about it, the more chance you will have of, like, 
practicing, sticking with it, because the beginning's kind of hard. Sure. It's awkward and everything. Yeah. So I say that. But the two things I would do, um, ultimately, because this is what I did, I would teach people a bunch of single note, recognizable little melodies. Oh, okay. You know? Like a part of a song like, or something. playing the real song because of copyright sure but i would you know like uh oh right right so or, not even a full chord yet no or like yeah oh i know that well you it's know, like instant gratification instant gratification yes. i mean obviously there's like some really famous ones that you can do right i can say them like seven nation army um, Iron Man. Sure. Just sure. one string. Yeah. Your ear hears it. Ooh, I recognize that. Oh, I like that, right? Yeah. So I always do that. Um, and then if you, but if you're an acoustic player, then I just show you the first two easiest chords, E minor and A sus two, because you don't even have to do anything new. No movement except one over. Yeah. And then if you get that and you're like, oh, that's kind of fun, then you just add one, you know, and then you add another one. And then you go, well, you know, knowing those three chords, you can play this thousand songs. Right. So let's do that. Let's play some of these songs, you know, and see where we go and then take it from there. That's fantastic. Yeah. Instant gratification. It's not overwhelming with theory and, you know, all that other stuff, which can come later and you can easily feed it into each lesson as yeah, you go. Yeah, and right? I'd much rather learn uh, Seven Nation Army than, than the open Mary scale. Had, Mary oh, had sure, a little sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And honestly, they're not hard. One's not harder than the other. Right. They're not. Right. Like, in, in, in some ways, Mary Had a Little Lamb's harder. So Seven Nation Army, we could say, is the new Mary Had a Little Lamb. I like that you know title. I mean? That's yeah. great. That's great YouTube title. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, 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 management, yeah. write that note. <laughs> write that down. That, that's a hit right there. Anything that you want to say to everyone out there? Uh, anything coming up? Um, that we need to keep an eye out for? Yeah, well, I mean, if you look right now, um, this is... Oh, yeah. This is... Uh, a tasty little piece that is, uh, little is on the horizon, huh? Something, something that uh, that uh, might might mm -hmm, definitely be mm -hmm. coming out very soon. So I'm just uh, thrilled and feel as fortunate and lucky as I possibly. I mean, you could. I couldn't have wished a more perfect life for myself. So I feel really, really lucky. Um, I've got you know a really cool guitar coming out soon. People will hear more about that. I've got a. a, a Television show coming out nice, on Access man. That's TV. Exciting. Yeah. Just related to guitar lessons, yeah. though. Like, I'm not, like, you know, not doing uh, uh, diners, drives, and dives or anything. But, all right. Uh, all right. <laughs> maybe, maybe the next show. Yeah. You know, find something like Burgers that. Burgers and guitars. Yeah, you, you know, know, maybe, maybe. And then just, like, I love what I do. Yes. So I'm wake up and the goal is still the same. Yes. And I'm just trying to uh, pay attention to how things evolve. Yeah. Because I mean, I've been doing it for 15 years. I'm, I'm, I feel like there aren't that many first generation YouTubers that are like still like fully charging like, mm. like I am. And I, I do think a part of that is just because of the niche, because right. I'm like an education thing. Mm. And also shorts and TikTok so popular. And I do all of that, but I do think I'm also still a little bit lucky that you can't learn like a full song in 30 seconds. Yep. You can like watch a riff and stuff. Yeah. But so like that long form YouTube video is still works well. Absolutely. For for what I'm doing. And I'm just trying to keep going, man. Man, well, you years are. In. Shoot, man, I'm, you I'm are. I'm gray like you, you know? I know. I know. We're getting up there. Dude, hey, you know what? And you've got it, and you're still doing it, and it's like, it, it comes across uh, uh, genuine, and like, you really do care about it. So I do, and that, I, that's I, what appreci most. I appreciate you saying it. I feel so fortunate. Uh, and I'm not just saying it. Like, yeah. I really feel it. No, man, it comes across in everything you do. So, yeah. so like, man, like for instance, awesome. I'm driving here today. Yeah. And I'm just like, is this real? Well, I had to think about <laughs> it too because I was like, I was like, you know, the person that's coming in today is one of the pioneers for online learning when it comes to this instrument that is such a part of our lives. So it's like, man, it was just great. It's just a great privilege and honor to have you here Thank you, talking man. with us. I don't know if this will make it because we've gone so long, but I will throw one another like anecdote out that just yeah. kind of like blew me away and it was very recent sure. and it's a Gibson player. That's, that's why I'm bringing it up. Uh, when I was just a guitar teacher, I had multiple students. They were the adult students, but they'd be like, you have to go 
with me tonight. I'm taking you to see Joe Bonamassa tonight. Yeah. You know, like I had multiple students like force. I mean, I love Joe. Love you, Joe. Yeah. But like, you're going with me to see Joe Bonamassa tonight. My guitar teacher, I'm taking. And uh, so I remember, you know, way back when he still had long hair mm-hmm. and not the slicked hair and glasses. Yeah. Like I remember way back because we're around the same age. Okay, so recently, uh, only about a week from filming this, Joe Bonamassa put some clips up of him in the studio recording okay. uh, an album, and he's wearing a trucker hat with a picture of me on the hat. Nice. And it's not a hat I sell. Oh, okay. So he didn't even get that hat like through me. Yeah. Like someone gave it to him or he had it made. And, uh, and so for like someone like him who really represents like a modern guitar player as well yes. as anyone yes. to be wearing a hat of me is just like wow ridiculous that's uh, awesome i mean and everyone was showing it to me everyone was like you know that's crazy me the picture. that's awesome yeah. yeah and you know he just said oh i'm wearing my custom marty schwartz hat that's what he said but um but so like for something like that like i i mean that's just not on the bingo card you know i just never ever i still like i'm saying it out loud right now and it's like Really? Did he really? Dude, do that's that? awesome. Yeah. Man, I want to thank you again Dude, for coming you out so and taking much. the time. Everybody, Marty Schwartz out there. Keep an eye on this guy because he's always doing something <laughs> great, man. That's Th- awesome. Thank you, Epiphone, Gibson. You've been so great. You've treated me so well. I'm so lucky. Oh, man, we'll hope to see you here soon. Thank and you. And then uh, why don't we do a little jam out? Dude, take I'll- everyone out. Yeah, man. In the, in the, in the, in the uh, the bunker, in the, gonna... well, I, you know, I got to think of a name for this place. But yeah, we're doing all things uh, gear related here, and just music and guitars. All right, man. G, G, let's do it. 